Today, Devin and I had scheduled to do some testing on the Tri-Glide. We have some uh, products that we were gonna do some test riding with. It's the first day that's been not down in the 30s and 40s, so we figured we'd do it today uh, before it started raining this afternoon. Got the soft tail up out of the way. Went in here. And the Tri-Glide did not start. And it's shown no signs of any kind of battery weakness at all. I do not keep it on a tender. This room is heated and air conditioned. And so I've never had to keep it on a tender. I've been gone a month and a half on a trip on the soft tail and never had this on a tender and just come back and it starts right up. But today when I came out to start it up, Look what happened. All this flickering, and you can hear this. You can hear that stuff clicking down there. And you see the dash flickering right there. I tried the tender at first and of course the tender is not going to bring it from 7.7 .7 volts or 8.49 volts up to where it needs to be. So I'm putting the charger on. I have It's an intelligent charger. will charge 2, 6 or 8 amps. I'm going to put on 2 amps because that's easiest on the battery and let it run for about uh, 24 hours. Actually it'll shut off automatically when it's fully charged. And I will check it again tomorrow and see if it's charged and if it's holding a charge. And if it is, then I'll probably start using a tender on it because obviously the battery's been damaged. And, um, but I'll check it out tomorrow and we'll come back to the video tomorrow and see how it's doing. And uh, I'm going to have to get a battery on order and get this battery re replaced. But we have a lot of testing we want to do next week. And I don't know if I can get a battery in time to do the testing that we want to do on Tuesday. And of course, the testing we're going to do today, that's just gotten scratched. It's not going to get done at all. So here, let's get this set up and I'll get the, char uh, the battery charger on it and see what happens. The battery charger is not plugged in right now. Come down here to the battery charger. And plug it in. And you can see it's a 2 amp, 6 amp, or 10 amp. I have it charging at 2 amps. And you can see it's not even when it gets all the way up here, it'll be fully charged, if it will even get up that high. So we've been doing a lot of testing, let the bike sit for two and a half weeks. It sat for two months before and came back and that battery was just dead. Click, 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 click. And um, we're going to see if we can get this to last a little while longer while we wait for a new battery to come in. And. Uh, I'll catch up with you tomorrow when we see what this does after being on the charger for a day. After charging the battery Thursday all day, I came out on Friday and was able to start it up. And I've left it sitting since last Friday. And this is Monday afternoon. Let's see what our battery voltage is at. So we're at 12.4 volts. So we're going to go ahead and start this after it's sitting for a few days with uh, the normal parasitic drain from the alarm and see how it does. <laughs> So that was a little slow. 
So the other day when I turned the key on and you heard that clicking, that was not the starter button clicking. I did not push the starter button. It was just flickering the lights just when I turned the key on. So anyway, it's starting now, but we can't do our test today. Uh, we're busy moving our shipping facility and hopefully we'll be able to get to the test later this week and uh, resume what we tried to start last Thursday. Since this bike let us down the other day from parasitic drain from just a couple of weeks, having the battery go dead, I'm going ahead and replacing the battery because it's on its last leg, even though after charging it up, it, it started. I don't want to get stuck somewhere. So it's just lived its life and it's time to put a new battery in. Going to go ahead and record what's involved in replacing the battery on a 2019 Touring model. First thing is take the seat off. And you can see I already cut the zip ties and everything to get all that out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the ECM. There's just two snaps right there. The ECM is now loose. We've already taken the screws out of right here to get this tray out of the way. And we just pull all this stuff up out of the way and I'm going to zip tie it completely out of the way so I have access to the battery. Just take a few zip ties here, put them together. Now you can see we have access straight down to the battery. So we have the factory battery. You notice I have a lot of auxiliary items hooked up to the battery. You notice all my hot connectors, I have fuses on them. None of this uh, wiring stuff straight unfused. We have fuses on all of the hot connectors because we don't want a problem. Now that battery should lift straight up out of here if I'm strong enough to do it. Here we go. <laughs> Factory battery gone. One of the most important things you can do, and see this little strap was not installed correctly. That's to help you get the battery out, but the people at the factory didn't do it right, so that wasn't hanging out. We'll make sure it's hanging out this time. Hopefully I won't be replacing the battery for a long time again. And we're going to lower the new battery in there. There we go. See, that helps lift it up there. Okay. Now we got to get some dielectric grease. What amazes me is people do electrical work and they don't use this dielectric grease. It's so inexpensive and it really prevents corrosion, getting a bad connection. I always, whenever I do any work, whenever I even unplug a connector and plug, before I plug it back in, I put dielectric grease on it just because it's going to reduce the chance of any corrosion and ending up having to clean connections. So the first thing we're going to do is put some on top of the terminal here. 
just so it gets a good coat and down in the hole put some on either side of this And do the same thing over on the hot side. This is an inexpensive insurance. We just don't want any corrosion happening anywhere on our connections. So we have this one and this one and this one and there's one more and this one and actually that's a weaker one so I'm going to put it in here and these all go through the factory hole, factory cable hole, and into the battery. You notice how I put the terminals splayed so none is on top of the other. And turn them all so that they're as much turn this way as possible because we have the battery tray that goes and hooks right onto here onto that little thing right there. So I want to make sure that those are out of the way. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down. There we go. Okay. Now we got to find the four negatives. And let's do this this way. So you notice we don't have any of the terminals sitting on top of each other. They're all side by side. Let's get this lined up. Through the main battery cable. And we're going to turn these Again, we got to make sure we leave room for the battery tray to latch on to that latch right there. Okay. Now, I did not disconnect any of the electric, so we turn this on. And we see a little over 12 volts there. And there's no reason not to start this. This is all secured. <laughs> so, that's a battery installation. We're going to put everything back how it was. The trickiest thing is this battery cover right here, this hooks into that silver thing. So we got to push it up over that. And then down. And there we go.
the ECM slides into that slot and clicks down like that. These two bolts go through here. And you see I put a little thread locker on them because most people don't use thread locker there. I use thread locker pretty much on every connection just because I don't want anything coming loose. And it does not hurt. So we tighten these puppies down. See the front of that tray, plastic tray, is hooked into that silver latch made for it. And then the back is held by these screws. So that tray does two things. It's on top of the battery. And it also holds the ECM and all these other connectors. Which we need to go ahead and zip tie up out of the way. So what we want to do... Uh, is pull this side cover out because I want to zip tie these wires. I cut the zip tie earlier when we had our problem with the battery. You see these are in there, that's there. All of this stuff is tucked nicely in. So we just need to get this down like it should be. Let's see, do I want this in or out? I want this in here. And then we're going to zip tie these through here like this. And there we have it. Battery changed out. So things don't always go as planned. Went to do some exciting testing last week. We're not able to check the battery and I probably could have gone another few months and kept it on a tender. But uh, then again, I might not have. I might have been a 500 miles from home and not been able to start the bike and had to change it out on the road or get delayed charging it up. So I just went ahead and put a new battery in it. Hopefully this helped you out. See how easy it is to change the batteries on these new bikes. Used to have to dig a lot further down to get to the battery on previous years, like this 2012 Softail. Uh, would take me three to four times as long to change the batteries what I just did now. So if you all enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please subscribe to our channel. It's free, doesn't cost you anything, helps us out. Share the video with your friends. You all ride safe out there.